Fantastic job, Lee Crawford. And that was Abby Wilcox making her medal winning jump in the women's aerial at the World Cup Freestyle Skiing Tournament in America's Deer Valley. Wilcox qualified fifth in the qualification rounds in Europe in January and then scored 81.76 to snatch the bronze medal in the finals last week. The so-called Pink Lady Saga took another turn this week. At a hearing on Wednesday night, the Central Coast Cricket Association lifted two of the three penalties handed down to the Southern Spirit Women's T20 team. The team ignored a directive from the CCCA three weeks ago and played in pink Hawaiian shirts as part of the McGrath Foundation Pink Stumps fundraiser. The punishment included a $1,000 fine, a loss of 20 competition points and a four-match suspension for Captain Sally Oman. The fine and the loss of points were dropped at the hearing, but Oman's suspension was upheld. It was truly supported by everyone in the community. There was nothing that I thought it would have erupted to this at all. The fact we raised $5,000 from the McGrath Foundation just goes to show the kind of people that are in my team and I'm super proud of, of my team and, and the club as well. Well, we're very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Lachlan Shelley. Lachlan is a former Gosford rugby junior and has played the last two years for Eastwood. More importantly, he's just been named in the junior Wallaby squad ahead of the World Rugby Under 20s championships to be held in Italy later this year. Lachlan, thanks for joining us. No worries, it's good to be here. You've just returned from uh, the first juniors development camp. Tell us a little bit about the training and what's involved. Yeah, look, um, it's, it's a good experience. Um, we've, we've just come back from a series of um, long days on the training paddock, but um, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely hard work, but you know, it's, it's what's got to be done and um, it's mainly just it's the series of trying to, you know, see, see, you know, who you're up against in a um, couple of training sessions a day, and yeah, just, just really, just battling out on the pitch. I understand there's a lot more intense technology involved with the Waratahs and the Wallabies. Give us a sense of what sort of technology they're using. Yeah, look, uh, everything, everything's monitored. So from the pitch to recovery, the nutrition, everything. So we got GPS, heart rates, monitors. You know, we got we're wearing bibs 24/7. Um, our training, our training runs are obviously monitored by drones, split set cameras, so we got everything filmed to a later analysis after the games and after training. Um, so everything is definitely highly, um, highly monitored and um, analysed on and off field. Well, I know it's no accident that you've made the squad. I know you've, you've, you've trained very hard, but you also have um, uh, an amazing natural talent uh, as fullback. Let's take a bit of a look at Lachlan in action. So Lachlan, it's a pretty intense six months coming up between now and Italy. Talk to us a little bit about what that six months looks like. Yeah, look, um, we've got we've got a few a few camps um, here and there, obviously to um, to finalise the final squad for the World Cup. But before then, we've we've got an Oceania tournament, which will be against New Zealand, um, Japan, and Fiji. So we don't know about Japan yet. Maybe Argentina or one of the other um, sides. But yeah, and then. Um, Obviously, we got the final the final camp in Narrabeen probably or away in Perth, so we can hit straight hit straight on the flight to um, Italy, where we will um, play in the World Cup. So now the the World Cup draw has come out uh, just recently, and yours looks like the draw from hell with the Kiwis, Georgia, and Wales, I believe. Okay. How are you feeling about that? Uh, look, um, we're coming off a pretty good record against New Zealand in the twenties over the past couple of years. Um, having said that, yeah, you don't know what to expect, and Wales are definitely a strong side, and as uh, New Zealand as well. Um, so it'll be it'll be a good challenge if um, I'm lucky enough to make the final World Cup squad. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to it. 
I know you, your mum and dad are very proud of your achievement and all the uh, players from the Gosford Rugby Club. What do your mates feel about you making the Junior Wallabies? Ah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few uh, mixed emotions, I think. Um, most of the boys are pretty, pretty proud and other boys may be a bit disappointed they're not in the same, um, in the same boat at the moment with um, their footy careers or their, um, just how they've you know, um, gone after the, after the club rugby. So, look, uh, overall, I think it's, it's, it's a good vibe, but you know, the, boys are, the boys are definitely proud. And we wish Lockdown all the best in making the final squad. The Central Coast Roosters have launched a new team to play in this year's New South Wales Rugby League Premiership. The team will feature a number of players who played for Sydney clubs as well as the Newcastle team last year. This will include NRL star Isabel Kelly. The 2018 Golden Boot winner will join the St George Illawarra team in the upcoming Rugby League Nines. And just in case you don't know who Isabel Kelly is, take a look at this. This flyer will not be pulled back. This is Isabel Kelly. And Isabel Kelly shows a clean pair of heels and streaks away downfield to score for Australia. Again, they've got them shot for numbers here. It's Isabel Kelly. And she'll score the first try. Here's Isabel Kelly. Now, what can she muster? We know how great an athlete she is. Kelly! And finally, in football, it was a seven-goal shootout up at Newcastle yesterday between the Jets and the Mariners. Torrential rain had threatened to postpone the match at McDonald Jones Stadium, and it was the Jets who adapted to the sloppy conditions best, led by a brace from key man Dimi Petratos. It's Miller. Royo at the back post, could not down, and Petratos, and they had the early goal, Newcastle. Petratos with the corner, and it's lashed in at the back post by Nikolai Topol-Stanley. This time. Whole clutch of players in the six yard box. And Ruan Tongit was one of them. And he's got the back in. It's the central. See if Jurich can find some quality. And back post was Jack Clisby. And they are all square, the central coast. It's Dimi Petratos. It's blocked by Gordon. Spins up in the air. Petratos. Newcastle lead again. Time in favour of the Jets. It's a way inflicted under the near post. Might have been an own goal celebrated which was a little mischievous really because there was a lot of attention dragged oh, Italiano not the best clearance off his line Miller let it run Harold looking to place it oh didn't he just didn't he just and that loss was now the sixth in seven game for the Mariners and pressure is building on coach Alan Stachik with the team staring down the barrel of a second consecutive wooden spoon that's all for around the grounds this week Hopefully the fields dry out during the week and we'll be back next Monday with more local sporting news. As always, our thanks go to Mate for their loyal support of sport all across the coast.